Greetings, everyone. Well, it looks like I have committed myself to the design and build speaker project because, as you can see here, I have spent some money on drivers. I spent $80 on a pair of drivers to try out. So for a pair of speakers, that's 160 bucks. But I may not need to do that because over here, I forgot about this driver here. It happens to be an 8-inch. I made a little subwoofer out of it. It works pretty decent. And uh, I've been running some tests, and uh, this thing seems to work pretty well. So why build my own speakers? Well, I like building my own things. And I design my own amp. I'm designing more amps, so why not do some speakers? You know, there's a lot of attention given to these little bookshelf speakers. If you watch the reviews on YouTube, you see people reviewing tons of these speakers. And they're pretty good. They have their uses. Like I use mine over here for my computer speakers. But they have their limitations. Well, for one thing, their sound pressure level, or SPL as they call it, is fairly low at a given power. Now they usually test at one watt and put the test microphone one meter away in a usually an anechaic chamber or maybe even a special room to measure the speaker. And their sound pressure level is generally pretty low. You'll find them under 85 dB using that measurement criteria I just mentioned. A lot of times their spec sheets give you one SPL rating, but if you actually measure it, you might find it somewhat lower. You know, that's fine for near-field listening, but if you want to fill a room full of sound and crank up the bass a little bit, maybe, you'll have to pair it with a subwoofer because, you know, a small speaker is just not going to do that well with bass, especially if you have to crank it up because they suffer from what's known as compression, where, you know, the small drivers they use in those speakers, they just cannot move enough air and they compress a little bit and distort. I've noticed that a lot with small speakers, but what I want to do is make a speaker that's a little bit larger, you know, use an 8-inch driver. It would work with most music and, like I say, not suffer from compression. Well, not as much. Every speaker is going to suffer from compression at some power level, but you know, just don't want it to happen too much. I made a quick sketch here of what I think the cabinet's going to look like. So I'm going with a fairly slender cabinet, but not too slender. You know, some designs have the woofer right up to the edge. You know, I don't really like that design. Tweeter will have some space on the front baffle away from the edges, help with diffraction. Might even roll these vertical edges. I don't know. I'm not sure how we can veneer that if we decide to go with veneer but yeah I'm just kind of thinking out loud there I put the port on the back is just not enough room you have to move everything up I want to have the tweeter and the woofer in the same vertical axis here so it just makes sense to put the port on the back the internal volume is going to be around a cubic foot that's pretty much in the neighborhood of the size I want the speaker to be. I don't want it too small where it struggles with bass or you get a lot of peaking and such. Uh, match the driver up with the cabinet size to get a good smooth bass. So these are the external measurements and each dimension should have a different number because the woofer is going to be able to play frequencies up to the crossover point around 2 kilohertz, whatever the crossover point may be. And at some frequencies, you know, you could have a resonance in the box. And that could be built up stronger if the dimensions are the same. So the box should really be different on 
the box measurements should be really different on each dimension. Now you can get away with a cube with a subwoofer because you know it's crossed over at such a low frequency you're not going to have that internal resonance issue. I'm basing this on uh, three quarter inch um, cabinet material. Oh I should also mention that if I have these cabinets made by a professional cabinet maker, get them all finished and nice and veneered, I think it would cost north of 500 bucks to have these made. So it would be nice to find somebody who would want to collaborate. You know, if I get enough support, I can throw some of that money around and maybe help them out with materials and a little bit of time. If I do it all myself, it's probably going to get the white acrylic latex paint treatment. You know, build them as good as I can build them and be done with it. Yeah, we'll see how that goes, if it turns into a collaboration or not. I know somebody mentioned in the community post that they had the equipment to measure and CNC and stuff like that. So, And they were in Ohio, because I'm in Ohio. So yeah, I might hit them up, see if they're interested or not. We'll keep that door open if somebody wants to collaborate on this. That'd be great. Okay, back to the drivers here. Well, that one in the box is the DC200. It's a Dayton Audio. This is also a Dayton Audio. It's the DA215-8. And this little silk dome tweeter. I got a one and one eighth inch size because I want to make sure it can handle the crossover point low enough. Some of the smaller ones need to cross over at a higher frequency and through my test this will work with either of those drivers at a crossover point somewhere in the 2k range I think. So here's some of the measurements I got. I use this Radio Shack sound level meter. It's supposed to be good between 32 and 10 kilohertz plus or minus 2 dB. But, you know, I don't know how accurate this thing really is. I bought it when Radio Shack was closing for 12 bucks. But it should be good enough for comparative or relative measurements. You know, I set the device up on a tripod and put it in the same place and took the measurements. So we have the, DC, or the DA215 and the DC200. Highlighted in yellow is the numbers across the room. And the numbers here are one meter from the speaker. And circled is the DC200 in the box with the port closed off. I just stuffed a, a sock tightly into the port to make it like a sealed system. Now keep in mind that this room is not an anarchaic chamber. It's going to have nodes and standing waves and at some frequencies you, know, you can see here it kind of peaks up. You know that's just the nature of the beast. I don't have the measuring equipment in the rooms to properly measure the speaker in but again it's kind of a relative comparison. But one thing you notice that both the drivers, you know, this $55 driver and the cheaper DC200, which is, I think it's like 36 bucks now. Well, I'm getting very similar numbers out of them. Now, the DC200, let me show you this graph real quick. It wants to be in a larger box. When I put its parameters in and model it in box modeling software, when ISD beta, some software I got years ago, in a one cubic foot box tuned at 45 hertz, it peaks up about 4 dB around 57 hertz. That's undesirable. You really don't want that. And after the peak up, it'll kind of slope off more steep, you'll lose your lower base. And the green line here is an ideal response. You want it flat and then it'll 
start to roll off. And in the same chamber, in the same cabinet, a sealed response would be like this. It would start rolling off earlier, but it'll be a slow roll off. In fact, I didn't draw it right here, but these lines will cross over at you know 20 some hertz. So because of the slower roll off on the sealed system at very low frequencies, the output will end up being the same. However, you really don't get a lot of content in the low frequencies. Most of the base frequencies you want is in this range. And you can say this is like 35 to 90 or something like that. And you can see we're several dB down here. Now this is just a general descriptive graph. It's not really, I don't have a lot of numbers, just a zero dB reference point. So that's why I like ported with this size of speaker because you get more SPLs in the base regions where there's going to be more content. Now to get back to this peaking effect with the DC200, well, when I measure it, I'm not seeing that hump. In fact, both speakers measure the same. If we look at 55 to 60 here, I'm getting the same numbers at this, you know, at one meter and across the room. You know, this speaker will work in a much smaller cabinet than the DC200 will, yet I'm getting the same numbers. And doing listening tests, the little DC200 performs just as well to my ears. So what I think I'm going to do is exchange this for another DC200 and get another driver here, another dome tweeter. And we'll have two sets of speakers or drivers. You know, a pair of these is 160, but since I have one DC200 already, if I exchange this, then I'll only be out $90. Didn't plan on using this driver because it didn't seem to model that well, but if it's going to sound right to my ears, and I'm not seeing that peaking, I'm going to use it. As for the crossover, I'm looking at a 12 dB per octave Linkwitz Riley type design where you have the coil and capacitor, capacitor and coil and the tweeter. Depending on the speaker, its electrical and acoustic characteristics, I meet, might need a Zobel here that'll prop up the impedance at the higher frequencies. But yeah, it depends on the acoustic output. You know, this might steal enough signal away that it may not be desirable to have it. Well, you know, it's just something I have to experiment with and see how it works out. Another thing I'm thinking of doing is designing generic or uh, universal crossover boards. They have position with many through holes for connecting different sized coils capacitors you might need the parallel capacitors to home in on a value you need if you need the Zobel there'll be a space for that there'll be space for pad down resistors if needed the tweeter and woofer crossovers can be separated for bi amplification or jumpered together just using one amp and uh, it'll be within limits you know it can't be a super high power crossover because the components will get physically large so yeah maybe somewhere around 100 watts or less we can make one for two-way systems and one for three-way systems if you're building a speaker you could just use the generic board and be done with it you don't have to worry about making laying out a crossover board so yeah universal crossover board idea kind of popped in my head when I was thinking of the design for this speaker well I guess it's going to wrap it up for this what do you think hey if you can support me I'd appreciate it this stuff isn't cheap it's going to cost some money to build a speaker often building your speaker yourself is not necessarily cheaper than buying one but I can almost guarantee it will be better if you get everything right you know I want the speaker to be fairly flat, flattish I would say. 
I might tune it to my liking, or I should say color it to my liking. You know, we'll just see how it all works out. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.